Right, welcome to this Codex review for Gene Steeler Colts. Games Workshop have very kindly sent me a copy through the post ahead of time. Uh, so in this video, I do plan to make a full review here. So it's going to be every part of this Codex uh, all the way through. So uh, the units, uh, wall traits, stratagems and so on all covered here in this video. So it's going to be a longer video, uh, but I'm going to cover everything uh, for those of you who are into Gene Steeler Colts or looking to get into them. So uh, Games Workshop sent me the copy. Usually I get my uh, Games Workshop stuff from gamingfigures.com. You can check them out. They do Games Workshop at a discounted rate. So this codex is a bit different to usual uh, because they give you this here, which is uh, quite unique. Nine inches here. That's for your, your deep striking, just to give you a, a rule there, because Genius to the Colts going to be a lot of that going on just for the start of play for these. And these here are your ambush markers. So, games are actually usually sort of, the usual format is to say, well, you know, you sort of make your own. But here, uh, they supply you with uh, a good number of these ambush markers to use. So, pretty good. Nicely mounted on card and just push them out and use them. And then there's a, comes with a backing here, which is just the back of the codex. So you could still read the back of the codex, uh, despite these being on the back. So just push those to the side, but that's what you get in with the codex as well. And then just the usual format codex here, so hardback, uh, exceptionally well produced. These 8th edition codexes are excellent, but uh, it's been a patient wait, I think, for uh, Gene Steeler Colt players here. This codex has finally arrived for them. So if I was, I don't collect these, if I was, I would probably draw inspiration from uh, the artwork here. This sort of purpley colour. It's colours that I've already used. I've actually just finished filming a game of, of Space Hulk here for the Plus channel. And you can see that's kind of the colour scheme for the Gene Steelers. And there is a painting tutorial for these on the regular channel here. Uh, so to show you how to paint that style. If you want to paint your Gene Steelers and Gene Steeler Colts and that sort of... Uh, this that blue and then that sort of pinky kind of lavender <laughs> colour. <laughs> just trying to think of the best description for it but that's the kind of color here it matches you see this kind of pastel kind of purple color come through here then uh, that tutorials on the channel I do like that color scheme it does it's sort of the classic sort of Gene Steeler colors and you've got reds coming through here orange is a nice color being intermi in intermingled with these as well uh, and then for Space Hulk we just filmed episode 10 so we're well into the campaign there over on the plus channel so we'll just flick through and show you some of the the artwork here is a strange faction. So this this cult that's uh, hidden away in the shadows uh, and then bursts out when the time's right, uh, when they've got enough power and strength they think they can overwhelm uh, the inhabitants, then uh, the cult rises up. So great theme running here, great style of play, very strong style of play for these. I do like the whole theme uh, and idea of Gene Steeler cults. And the model range now, what I thought was perhaps one of the more neglected Factions, one of the less popular Games Workshop have released a whole load of new models. So it's a very exciting time, probably the best time to start collecting these. Just has has the impression of a very sort of finished faction now. There's so many good models available. Fighting against the Admech here. Yeah, what a fight that would be. Brilliant game that would be. So I'd look forward to seeing that perhaps come down the channel. And love this artwork here, just the clash of colour schemes here. The red and yellow of the Howling Griffins fighting against, again, the reds, purples of the Gene Silver Colts, but very atmospheric, very striking clash of colour schemes here. Brilliant. Really good. And great thing about Gene Silver Colts, if you want to collect them, they can fight against everybody. So fight against all the Imperial stuff and fight against everybody else as well. So, you know, they're an enemy to everybody, these ones. So Gene Silver Curse, just giving you all the background information, the creation of a cult. Parasitic Order, Worlds of the Faithful, right, it's giving a lot of background information, different worlds here, Cult of War, Fighting Against the Space Wolves, another great game that will be, the Hive Fleets Descend, the Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor, so these are the different types here, uh, the Hive Cult, great you can commandeer and use uh, Astro Militarum stuff as well, very cool, the Bladed Cog, Rusted Claw, the Pauper Princes, does sound very cool, the Twisted Helix, 
I'm sure you can invent your own as well. Infestations beyond numbers, there's others here. Uh, the inner worm, the behemoid, undercult, star kindred. So just let's you choose multiple different color schemes for these. So you can see the cults of the Imperium, hidden dynasties. Wow, it's a great artwork here as well. I think this has been featured on a you know, kill team here. Brilliant artwork. Patriarchs, uh, Medusas, Primuses, Acolyte, Icon Wards. The whole range is complete, really. Uh, Locuses, Clamavuses, Sanctuses, Kelamorph. Great range of models here. Just going to run through all these units that you get. Just flip through here. Pure Strange Gene Stealers. Abominance, Aberrants, Atalan Jackals. This is the, the Bikers and the Quad Riders. Fantastic models that have been added to this range. Uh, the Achilles Ridge Runners. This is the uh, light vehicle that can. Oh, it's not quite a, like a buggy type. Similar to some of the Orc releases here. That's the Goliath. That's the vehicle that's already out there. New Fight Regiments. And this is the, the range of models now. Very impressive. I mean, one of the one of the best ranges that's out there now, in my opinion. Just you know, up to date, fully up to date models, all plastic, and uh, incredible sculpting work. So really, really good. Very, very exciting time uh, to be collecting these. Yeah, really nice. That's the Imperial Guard that you can convert over. Really good. So, loads of uh, models here that gives you an idea. It is going to be a lot of, if you do collect these, the standard army is going to have a, a fair amount of infantry. So if you are going to collect them, be prepared to paint a good number of infantry here. Pa perhaps on the same kind of scale, almost as Astro Militarum, you know, a lot of infantry, for sure. And a whole variety of different units and so on to collect, but uh, definitely loads of infantry. Been looking really good. Okay, so we'll get into the rules here. So it talks about cults here. You've got to make sure your cult keyword matches up. If you grant benefits, you've got a leader that grants his reroll ones, for example, and he's from a certain cult. For the other units to benefit, they need to be of the same cult. It's just the usual rules there. Uh, and then unquestioning loyalty. Each time you fail a saving throw for a cult character model, and each time a cult character model suffers a mortal wound, before inflicting damage, check to see if it is within three inches of any friendly cult or Brood Brothers units with this, this ability. If it is, you can select one of those units and roll a dice. On 4 plus, do not inflict any damage on the character, but one model in the selected unit of your choice is slain, otherwise the character suffers damage. That's not great, so you can uh, chuck in your, your, your usual models to save characters there. Uh, so, fantastic rule. Just that devotion to the leaders. They're willing to sacrifice themselves. a whole cult idea, so very good. Uh, cult Ambush. This is what these counters are for. So during deployment, you can set up this unit in ambush instead of on the battlefield. Uh, if this unit is the infantry or biker keyword, you can either set it up in ambush or underground instead of on the battlefield. So you've got two options. You've got ambush uh, or underground. So that's the two ways you can play them. When you set up a unit underground, it can emerge at the end of your movement phases, set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more nine inches away from any model. So instead of deep striking in, it's up striking. It's coming up from under the ground, but the result's the same. It's the same. Uh, usual rules for that. Uh, when you set up a unit in ambush, you place one ambush marker anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within your own deployment zone. You will need one ambush marker for each unit that you will deploy in this way. So you say I'm going to deploy unit of infantry. You don't put them out, uh, you just put the marker out. It has to be within your own deployment zone. Uh, so your opponent's guessing, well he knows there's something there but doesn't know uh, what unit it may be. I, th I think, so I mean, I've so this the review is going to be sort of covering the rules, tactica, and discussion as well. Um, so immediately, I'm thinking here. Well, say you're alternating placing units on the board. You then say, right, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to uh, so it's your turn to deploy units. Say, right, okay, this unit of infantry, I'm going to put them in ambush, and then you put your counter out. Does your opponent then know that that counter is, they know what that, that unit is. You put the marker out and they say, well, I know what it is. The marker's there, but they know what it is because you um, called it, it would be that unit. 
or can you bring any unit on uh, from any of those ambush markers once they're out? Probably can, just to mix it up so your opponent doesn't know where each unit's going to arrive. That's what I'm wondering here. Um, so, if you set up a transport in ambush, uh, you must still tell your opponent what units are embarked within it when it's set up in ambush. Do not set up separate ambush markers for units that start the battle embarked within a transport. Yes, yeah, so you put three units inside a transport, it's just still one marker. Uh, ambush markers are not units and cannot be targeted, attacked or destroyed. It's very cool, these, these rules. I love the style of play for these, really do. When measuring to or from ambush markers, always measure to the centre of the marker. If you're playing a mission that uses concealed deployment, the concealed deployment rule only allows units that do not have the core ambush ability. If you're playing a mission that uses sentries, sentry models cannot be set up in ambush even if they have the core ambush ability. So revealing ambush markers, so now what happens? If you have the first turn, you must reveal all of your ambush markers at the start of your movement phase, one at a time, before moving any units. Right, so there you go. Each time you reveal an ambush marker, select one unit from your army that is set up in ambush. Right, okay, so the answer is the question here. So you. You, you are choosing which units arrive where, so it really can be mixed up, so that's great. It's really a deployment thing, this one, if you're just playing for ambush. Uh, coming up from underground is more of the uh, surprise and the deep strike going on there. Uh, so you select one unit from your army that is, you set up in ambush, then set it up one model, set up one model from that unit within an inch of the ambush marker, then remove the marker before setting up the rest of the model's units, wholly within six inches of the first model. So you can't conga line all the way along, you've got to keep them in a cluster, which is fair enough. Wholly within your own deployment zone, and more than nine inches from any enemy models. Any models that cannot be placed are destroyed. If it is your turn, the unit can then still move and shoot normally during the turn it was set up. Uh, but if it is a transport unit that disembark from it, this turn cannot be set up within 9 inches of enemy models, right, so it's still restricting you there, it's fair enough. Note that even though such units have arrived as reinforcements this turn, unless they actually move during this phase, they do not count as having moved in the movement phase for any rules purposes, such as shooting heavy weapons. If your opponent has the first turn, then none of their units can be set, then none of their units can be set up or end a move within 9 inches of any of your ambush markers. Oh, so it's quite restricting on the opponent. At the end of your opponent's first movement phase, after they've set up all of their units from reinforcements, if any, reveal all of your ambush markers as described above before continuing with the turn. Ah, right, so you do get to see what they are. But I, I, I love the whole thing, this. Very cool. It looks well organised here, the way they've sorted out this. Right, so we'll go through the units here. And it's, it's be, give you an idea of all the rules, Tactica, which units I would choose if I was building an army. Uh, so it's sort of Tactica mixed in with going through uh, the rules here as well. So Patriarch, here. Big Broodlord type thing here. Uh, power level seven, cover all the points here for you as well. So Patriarch, 125 points and Familiars, uh, zero to two of them, they're 12 points time. So uh, movement eight, very quick weapon skill. 2 plus, ballistic skill 5 plus, strength 6, toughness 5, 6 wounds. Uh, 6 attacks, leadership 10, and a 4 up saves. Tons of attacks for this thing. And the familiar, I'll just call out the stats here. Move 6, 3 up, weapon skill, no ballistic skill, strength 4, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 8, and a 6 up save. So Patriarch is armed with monstrous rending claws. It may be accompanied by up to 2 familiars. So, monstrous rending claws is zero. So, flat 125 points here. Monstrous rending claws, uh, strength of the user, strength six, AP minus three, D3 damage. Reroll failed wound rolls with this weapon. Each time I make a wound roll of a six plus uh, is AP minus six and damage of three. So, nasty enough, he's a character killer for sure. Okay. Uh, cult ambush, so the rules that we just looked at. Brood telepathy. Have one to hit rolls for attacks made by cult gene steal units in the fight phase, whilst within six inches of any friendly cult patriarch models. So very useful for gene stealers. Cool. Living idol, uh, cult and brood brothers units automatically pass morale tests, whilst within six inches of any friendly cult patriarch models. Very good. And then lightning reflexes, five plus inbound save. Okay, so very similar to what Tyranids have here for the brood lord. Swift and deadly. You can charge even if you advance. So yeah, very quick. And then familiars. If a patriarch is accompanied by any familiars, then once per game, 
At the end of its controlling player's psychic phase, its familiars can lend it additional power. If they do so, the Patriarch can immediately attempt to manifest an additional psychic power. Great. When rolling to wound this unit, always use the Patriarch's toughness whilst it's on the battlefield. The death of a familiar is ignored for morale. Familiars are considered to have the character keyword for purposes of shooting attacks. Uh, you can attempt to manifest one psychic power and deny one. You know, smite and two powers from the brood mind discipline. So we'll come to that later on and check out that discipline that's unique to uh, this codex here. That's the Patriarch. Pretty good HQ. Solid enough. 125 points. You're getting a a good one. See, I would go for one of those, I reckon, for sure. I sort of have one already for my uh, Space Hulk. So you can sort of maybe get away with that guy. So there you go, there's one <laughs> there already. You can get away with him. I mean, that's that's a brood law, but I think it matches him pretty good. So, okay. So yeah, I've got the start of an army, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so Omega's next. Uh, it's power, power level seven, by the way, with Patriarch. Uh, power level four for the Magus. Again, familiars are 12 points, 80 points for the Magus here. Add movement six, weapon skill plus six, skill three plus, strength three, toughness three, four wounds, three attacks, lose eight and a five up save. It's armed with auto pistol, cultist knife, and force stave, and can be accompanied by up to two familiars. Auto pistol, uh, range 12, pistol one, Strength 3, AP 0, 1 damage. The Cultist Knife is strength for the user, AP 0, 1 damage. Each time it fights, you get additional attacks. It's no great value there. And the Force Stave, plus 2 strength. So you're fighting at strength 5, AP minus 1, D3 damage. Pretty standard weapons. Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty. So that's that, where it can be protected by other models uh, trying to block the shots and so on coming in. Spiritual Leader, each cult unit other than Psychers within 6 inches of any friendly cult magus models at the start of your opponent's psychic phase can attempt to deny a psychic power that targets them during that phase if they th as if they themselves were psychers. Yeah, cool. That is very good. And then you've got the familiars, usual rules. You can attempt to add manifest one and deny one. And it still knows two powers from the brute mind discipline. So it's like a cheaper psyker there with the magus. It's quite psychic heavy here. Gene Stillers. It's like Tyranids, I guess, as well. Uh, the Primus next, power level 4. 72 points. Does not include War Gear. Yeah, that whole list there of characters, not necessarily. You may have to pay for some War Gear for some of these. Movement 6, Weapon Skill 2+, plus. Uh, Ballistic Skill 3+, plus. Strength 4, Toughness 3, 5 wounds, nice little wounds, 4 attacks, really good leadership, 9 and 5 up save. Uh, Primus is armed with a Needle Pistol, Bone Sword, Toxing injector claw and blasting charges. So you'd be looking at needle pistol is going to be zero, surely. It must be. Yep. You've got 72 points here. Bone sword you may well have to pay for. It's three points. You're at 75 points now. Toxin injector claw is zero. And blasting charges should be three of free of charge yeah zero. Okay. 75 points so needle uh already covered the no needle pistol uh is not too bad actually range 12 pistol one strength one ap zero d3 damage this weapon always wins on a two plus unless it's a vehicle or titanic unit so uh needle pistol's good bone sword strength the user which is four here ap minus two and one damage Toxin Injector Claw, Strength Use, AP minus 1, 1 damage. This weapon always wounds on 2 plus, unless it is targeting a vehicle or Titanic unit. Each time you make a wound draw of a 6 plus this weapon, it's AP minus 4. So it's okay, not devastating. And the Blasting Charge, we'll cover that here, it's like the grenade, um, which is this is a frag grenade. Same as a frag grenade. Abilities, Cult, the usual abilities, Cult Ambush, Unquestioning Loyalty. Alright, so Cult Demagogue. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by cult units in the fight phase whilst they're in six inches of any friendly cult primuses. So, plus one to hit rolls. Great, it's really good. The Meticulous Planner. The first time this model is set up on the battlefield, select one enemy unit on the battlefield. Reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by friendly cult units. Have the cult ambush ability whilst they're in six inches of this model. 
when targeting that enemy unit. Okay, so like a lieutenant uh, ability. But restricted just to one type of units, not quite as good as lieutenants. Primus is okay. Yeah, so far, the Patriarch here would be the, the best option, but these are cheaper HQs to take. Right, the Acolyte Icon Ward here, next. 53 points. Auto Pistol, Rending Claw. I think it's probably going to be two points for Rending Claw. Uh, no, none, zero. Interesting. And uh, blasting charges, so yeah, just the just what you paid there, 53 points. Very, very cheap here. Uh, movement six, power level three, by the way. Couldn't cover its power level four for the Primus. Three plus, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength four, toughness three, four wounds, four attacks, leadership eight, and a five up save. Uh, we know all of these here. The rending claws, same as the tuners have, and his six is to wound, is AP minus four. It's AP minus one, usually, one damage. Uh, usual special rules. Nexus of Devotion. Roll a d6 each time a cult infantry or biker model other than Aberrant loses a wound whilst it's within six. On a six, the wound is not lost. Right, so like a, a pain boy type thing here. Sacred Banner. Reroll foul morale tests for the friendly cult units whilst within six. Pretty good. And then uh, Bestial Devotion. Reroll Bestial Vigor rolls of one for friendly cult Aberrant models whilst the units are within six inches. Of this model, it's pretty good actually. Reroll morale and six is to ignore damage. I think that's well worth it. That one, so that's a good one there. The uh, icon ward and the bominance next power level six. Uh, it's uh, movement six, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill six plus, strength six, toughness five, five wounds, three attacks, leash eight, and a five up. So, pretty tough here for the bominant. 105 points. So I'm doing Rending Claw and Power Sledgehammer, which is zero. And it's guided by a Mindworm Familiar, which attacks using its Familiar Claws. So, Familiar Claws is strength 4 AP 0 1 damage. Each time model guided by Familiar fights, it can make two additional attacks with this weapon. The Power Sledgehammer is times two strengths, fighting strength 12. A minus three and D6 damage. So that's the nastiest, that's the nastiest weapon so far. And attack with this weapon, subtract one from the hit rolls, so you'll be hitting on fours. Yeah, not so good. Damage rolls of one and two made for this weapon count as three instead. So once you get those hits, it's pretty good. So something with the ability to plus one to your hit rolls is good to help him out, because otherwise you'll be hitting on fours. Rending claw, usual rules for that. Usual special rules. Bestial vigor. When inflicting damage on this model, reduce the damage characteristic of the attack by one to a minimum of one. In addition, roll a d6 each time you lose a wound. Five plus. The wound is not lost. And then regenerative flesh at the start of your turns, of each of your turns, you regain d3 wounds. Cool. The chosen one. Each unmodified hit roll of a six for attacks in the fight phase. For friendly cult aberrant units within six inches, score two hits instead of one. Nice bonus that. Pretty good. Yep, and then Mindworm Familiar. Uh, subtract one from Psychic Test, take them for Psychers that are within 12 inches of any enemy abominance. Two in Psychers not affected. Yep, pretty good. Right, this one here, the Jekyll uh, Alphas, I would probably say, and I, I can imagine a lot of people are going to agree, but perhaps my favourite model so far, just the sniper on the bike. Just the sculpt is fantastic. I didn't think I'd see bikes in Warhammer 40,000, but the day has come here. <laughs> but it's an exceptionally good model. It really is very cool. Okay. So, uh, power level 4, movement 14, very fast. Sniper on a bike. Really good. Weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus, you'd expect it to be. Uh, strength 3, toughness 4. Five wounds, nice little wounds, three attacks, lose eight and a five up save. Uh, 70 points here. It's armed with a Jackal Sniper Rifle. Great name, very cool. Uh, so... Zero. 
auto pistol blasting charges so uh, you get 70 points is it any good though is the question so sniper rifle then range 36 heavy one so even if you move you're still hitting on three plus strength four minus two and d3 damage this weapon can target enemy character even if it's not the closest enemy unit if you roll a six plus to wound with this weapon it inflicts mortal wound addition to its normal damage so a, a decent sniper rifle is it worth the 70 points? Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty. Skilled Outrider, minus to the hit rolls for attacks that target this unit in the shooting phase. I mean, it's a character that's usually going to be protected anyway. And the other benefit here is priority targets sighted. At the start of your shooting phase, select an enemy unit that is visible to and within 36 inches of this model. At the end of the phase, add one to the hit rolls for attacks made by friendly cult units that target that enemy unit whilst within 6 inches of this model. So you've got to have some models clustered around this one here. Uh, or within 12 inches of a friendly cult biker unit. An enemy unit can only be selected as the target of this ability once per phase. So like a scout biker with a sniper rifle and then helping out other units with their hit rolls. Pretty good. So you've got like a combo going on there. But you've got to have at least one in your army. <laughs> sure, very cool. On the bike there, cool. Okay, so that's the HQs. Great selection. Not lacking in, in options here in this codex. Very nicely fulfilled this one here, really good. So Acolyte Hybrids is the first troops choice here. So they're seven points a time, units of five to 20. It's power level three for four of them. So Acolyte Hybrid, movement six. Uh, weapon skill 3 plus, it's a good weapon skill here, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 4, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and a 5 up save, and the, the leader uh, is an extra attack and leadership. You can have 4 of them with an acolyte leader, you can take another 5, another 10, another 15. And they're armed with auto pistols, cultist knives, rending claws, and or rending claw, and blasting charges. So... Not bad. General all-rounders there. Pretty good in close combat. And then some shooting ability available from them as well. Then, I've covered a lot of these weapons, but any modern replaces plays its auto pistol with a hand flamer. So use your rules for that. One acolyte hybrid may carry a cult icon. The cult icon gives you re-roll hit rolls of one of this unit's attacks in the fight phase, whilst it contains a model of a cult icon. And that's ten points. If it's a big unit, it's worth it, I reckon. Two attacks each would be worth taking that if it's a bigger unit, for sure. Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty. For every five models in the unit, so you've got like four models could take this, up to two Acolyte Hybrids. May replace their Cultist Knife and Rending Claw with a Heavy Rock Drill, Heavy Rock Cutter, Heavy Rock Saw, or Demolition Charge. So for every five, so you really, Unit 20 can take eight of these options here. So you can really kit them out well and get them specialised for certain tasks. Uh, the Acolyte Leader may replace its Cultist Knife with a Bone Sword. We'll come back to these other options here and check these out. And the Acolyte Leader may replace its Cultist Knife and Auto Pistol with a Lash Whip and Bone Sword. Which is, Lash Whip and Bone Sword is AP-2, strength for the user, 1 damage. If the bear is slain in the fight phase before it's made its attacks, leave it where it is. Uh, you can then fight with it before it's removed from the battlefield. So it's like a toned down power sword which will cost five points it's more expensive than a power sword <laughs> okay okay so how would I equip these there's some great options here so heavy rock drills the first option depends what you need Depends what's lacking or what you need in your army. So if you need a bit of anti-tank, a bit of anti-infantry, a bit of anti-hordes, and you equip these units out uh, here. If you go for bigger units, anything to help them morale is going to be a big issue to make sure you don't lose lots of models here. But it's a great way of burying and uh, bodyguarding these uh, specialist weapons here. So the first one is Heavy Rock Drill. Uh, so 17 points a time. It's a melee weapon. Times two strengths. You're fighting at strength eight. AP minus three and one damage. 
After the bearer has made all of its attacks, roll a d6 for each model that suffered damage from this weapon at this phase but has not been destroyed, and a 2 plus the model being rolled for suffers one mortal wound, and if that model is not destroyed, you can roll another d6. This time the model suffers one mortal wound on a 3 plus. Keep rolling a d6, increasing the result required to cause a mortal wound by one each time to the model being rolled for is destroyed or well, the roll is failed. Failed. So, it's nasty. Nasty enough. So, you'd be. If you're planning on getting stuck in close combat and up against something that's tough, then you'd maybe take two of them. That would cause trouble for anything bigger. So, unit's not been destroyed. So, is it even a vehicle? Two plus for a mortal wound, three plus, four plus. Yeah, it's two or three of those in the unit. It's going to punch its way through stuff pretty quick. Yeah, great rules. Good weapon. Okay, so yeah, I'd, I'd definitely go for a couple of them in the squad. Maybe you make squads that are all rounders, so a you know, good bit of shooting, good bit of close combat, and sort of make them able to take on multiple tasks. Heavy rock drill is a good one. Definitely really good, but I'd go, use that for going tank hunting. Yeah, this, this army looks fun here. Your other options then is the Heavy Rock Cutter. 12 points, so cheaper by five points. It's a melee weapon times two. Strength, so again, strength, strength eight. AP minus four, and D3 damage, roll D6 each time model other than a vehicle suffers damage from this weapon. If you roll higher than the model's remaining number of wounds, it's instantly slain, like a sudden death. When attacking this weapon, you must subtract one from the hit roll. Scary. Okay. That's terrifying. Okay, heavy rock cutter. Nasty uh, close combat ability here with these. That's the theme so far. Uh, heavy rock saw. Uh, Ten points, even cheaper. Times two strength, AP minus four, and two damage. Right, so a lot tamer. Uh, no minus two hit rolls though, so you've been hitting on threes with that one. Yeah, I, oh, I take maybe a couple of rock drills and a rock cutter or two, and you've got a nasty equipped unit there. And the great thing is you can keep the cost down because the actual bulk of the unit, the model count, that cost is cheap. And then uh, you're then burying it nicely in here, but morale's the key got to keep the morale solid to try and keep these you know what you've paid the points for keeping them alive and not losing models for bad morale okay and the next one's a demolition charge which will be across here I think just five points you really equip these well they're not gonna <laughs> there's not a Lightly equipped units here, these are carrying some great stuff. Demolition charge, grenade D6. You could get six shots here. Strength eight minus three D3 damage. Well, it's once per battle. Wow. So one use only, but demolition charge, yeah. Um, add some of those in as well. Terrifying. It's a really good options there for the Acolyte hybrids. Uh, Neophyte hybrids next. That's these ones. I think one of my favorite units, just love the look of them. They're brilliant sculpt, these ones. Look very, very cool. The power level four, but you get ten of them: uh, the neophyte leader and nine of the hybrids. Yeah, uh, they're five points a time. So this is like your guard, uh, imperial guard equivalent here. Nice and quick still. Movement six. Four plus weapon skill and ballistic skill. Strength three, toughness three. One win, one attack. Leadership seven, five up. Save. The leader gets an extra attack, an extra leadership. Uh, you can go all the way up to units of 20. And they come with blasting charges, auto pistol, auto guns. Haven't covered the auto gun yet. It's uh, rapid fire 1, range 24, strength 3, AP 0, 1 damage, just a last gun. Equivalent. So, war gear then. Uh, any neophyte hybrid may replace its auto gun with a shotgun. Usual for that. wonder if they'll charge you for a shotgun here. No, it's a straight swap. So, uh, shotguns, range 12, assault 2, strength 3. If it's over 6 inches, it's plus 1 strength. So, I, I would stick to auto guns. Uh, one neophyte hybrid may carry a cult icon. 
We've already covered that, that's 10 points. Up to two neophyte hybrids may each replace their auto gun with one item from the special weapons list. So you can get into special weapons here. Uh, so up to two. Okay, so we'll cover the special weapons here. So a flamer, grenade launcher, already know the rules for those, just the usual rules. And then a Weber uh, is one point. I think we'll have to go through to here to get this one. Uh, range 16, that's very rare, that range, very rare you get a range 16 weapon. Assault D3, strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. And this weapon automatically hits its target. Nice. We're making a shooting attack with this weapon. Use either the strength or toughness characteristic of the target to determine the wound roll, whichever is lowest. Cool. Okay. Uh, so that's the specialist weapons. Yeah, weapons are pretty cool. Uh, near fight leader may replace its auto gun and auto pistol with. Uh, Items from the pistol list and one item from the melee weapon. So we'll cover these now and we know what they are for the rest of the review here. So, pistols, auto pistol, bolt pistol, las pistol, web pistol. Web pistol is going to have the similar rules there. It's range 12 and pistol 1. So, uh, and then melee. So, uh, chainsaw, cultist knife, just an extra attack, I think that one, power maul. Uh, usual rules for that, and then power pick. Uh, power pick. Power more bow is four points, power pick is nine. Uh, so let's go back here. If I remember rightly, power pick, there it is there. Uh, strength of the user, AP minus two, D3 damage. Each time. A model with a rending claw makes attack with this weapon. It can make an additional attack with its rending claw. Okay. But uh, power pick's not bad. But it is nine points to take that one. And your, your neophyte, neophyte leader's only going to have... Uh, the model looks great, but there's only going to be two attacks with that. Hitting on fours as well, so... Not that amazing. Okay. If you want to spend the points on that. Uh, Neophyte gets a striking with easier cannon fodder here. The weapons aren't that amazing. The Acolyte Hybrid's way better. That's your more elite and harder hitting unit. These are more just for filling out space here. But up to two Neophyte Hybrids may each replace their auto gun weapons from the heavy mining weapons list. So you can go for heavy stubbers. That's okay. It's forced to hit though. Mining laser and seismic cannon. So the, the mining laser is uh, 12 points and the seismic cannon, 12 points, same points for either of these. Uh, seismic cannon then, you can go, when attacking this weapon you choose one of the profiles, all wound rolls of 6 plus have an AP of minus 4. So you, seismic cannon, long wave, range 24, heavy 6, strength 3, minus 0 and 1 damage. That's, very good at all. And a short wave, range 12, heavy 3, strength 6, minus 1, 2 damage. It's okay. It's not bad. Not that amazing. Okay. Bad. Then, the other option is the, the mining laser here, uh, which is range 24, heavy 1, strength 9, minus 3, but it's just D3 damage. Okay, so the options are there. I would imagine I would keep these sort of bare bones and just sort of screening units and uh, for crowding around objectives and so on uh, for absorbing damage, distracting the opponent but I wouldn't really go out all out trying to equip these particular ones here because they're low weapon skill and ballistic skill but uh, fantastic models though so I would definitely have them in an army for sure but uh, for screening and for objectives and bulking the army out great units so Brood Brothers Infantry Squad, this is just your Guardsman here, so if you want to see the rules for Astra Militarum, check out the Astra Militarum Codex, we're not going to recover all of that here, so anything that's Imperial Guard, just a copy of that, um, then I'd, I'll just 
leave that uh, for the other code. You can check out the codex review for Astra Militarum, which is already up on the channel. Um, just the same equipment, flamers, grenade launchers, laser gun, laser pistol, chainsaw, frag grenade. And you've got a Vox caster in there, which is reroll round tests. So, usual. so uh, that's troops finished. Again, you can use those to bulk your army up. I, you know, and you can get the heads and swap them in, but there's no way. I'd, I'd go here. These are fantastic models. They're brilliant models. So, hybrid metamorphs are into elites now, here. So, uh, power level three, that gets you four of them, and the metamorph leader. So, uh, nine points a time. So unit of ten is 90 points, uh, which you can go up to units of ten. You get four, five of them, and then you can take up to five more. Each model is armed with an auto pistol, auto pistol, rending claw, metamorph talon, and blasting charges. So this is your half gene sealer, half human type unit here. Strange looking units, these ones at the top here. So, movement six, weapon skill three plus, movement, uh, weapons, uh, ballistic skill four plus, strength four, those you see they're geared more towards close combat, toughness three, one wound, three attacks, nice. Really, really good. Leadership seven, a free up save. Oh, sorry, five up save. And the leader is an extra attack, so four attacks for him, leadership eight. Okay, so, now they're all surrendering claw. The Metamorph Talon is uh, strength use, AP zero, one damage. Each time you bear a fight, so you make an additional attack with this weapon. Add one to the hit rolls for attacks made uh, with this weapon. So, you're on twos to hit. It's okay, so saturation of, of hits, really, you get with that. Any model, any model may replace its rending claw with Metamorph Talon. So you could go for two Metamorph Talons. I guess that's the way you can play it. Just for extra attacks. Any model may replace this Metamorph Talon with a Rending Claw, with a Metamorph Whip and Rending Claw. So you keep the Rending Claw, take the Whip. Uh, the Whip is, if the bear is slain, you get to fight. That's it, and it's AP zero on damage, strength for the user. Not that great, really. It's the Rending Claws is your, seems to be the best hit. No, that's what you put confidence in, is the, the rending claws. Okay. Uh, the Metamorph Whip is zero. Okay. Any model may replace its Metamorph Talon, a rending claw with a Metamorph Claw. Okay, so you lose both the rending claw and the talent, you get a Metamorph Claw. That's four points, but you're on plus two strength and it's AP minus one, that's nastier. Now you're fighting at strength six all of a sudden. Wow. So great infantry killer, medium infantry, sort of tower fire warriors, that kind of level. These guys will cut through them fast enough. Uh, any model replace its auto pistol with a hand flamer. Now that's an interesting option. Let's see if that's viable. Hand flamer is one point. Do you might be tempted to go for that? Like a lot of them. Yeah, really good actually. Strength, um, range six, pistol D6, strength three, AP zero, one damage, and it's auto hits on the targets. Imagine getting stuck in combat, you've got four of these hand flamers in close combat, it comes to your turn, four D6 auto hits. That was really good. Or if you get charged by something, uh, great way of dealing with hordes. You know, I'd go hand flamers. Take a load of them of hand flamers. Brilliant. Yeah, okay, very cool. Uh, the leader may take a bone sword. It's worth equipping here with four attacks and a cult icon. Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd equip these to kill medium type infantry. So I'd take a load of hand flamers, lots of them, metamorph claws. Yeah, because your BS is four plus, but with the auto hits, you've got some exceptionally accurate firepower. Like just plastering loads of shots. Yeah, it's like a unit of ten. I give up six of them hand flamers, or more, eight of them. Loads and loads of hand flamers. Very cool way to play those. And then uh, give half the squad the claws, the metamorph claws, the plus two strength, and then just rely on the rending claws there. Tons of attacks. I'm sure there'll be great ways to enhance these. And uh, quite cheap, actually. Yes, yeah, so they're a nasty unit. I think when I reviewed the index, I said they're a nasty unit, and they, they, they seem pretty good here. Uh, yeah, cult ambush and question loyalty, and the cult icon uh, bonus there. Yeah, I think they would be a good unit. 
So you sort of invest in, you don't, I wouldn't invest in all the units. So these are just no investment tool, bare bones, bulk the army out, put investment into them. And those are your, for killing your heavier stuff, so you go send them out vehicle hunting, monster hunting, and so on. And then send these guys to take on, yeah, a chew for any type of infantry. And the way you can gear them up to take on anybody, hordes, medium infantry, even heavy infantry, I think they would do well. Yeah, really good. So you got nice infantry options here to deal with whatever uh, needs to be dealt with here. Aberrants is next. Still on elites here. So uh, 16 points a time. Power level seven. Movement six. They're still fast. These ones, despite them being heavier. Uh, weapon skill three plus. Ballistic skill six plus. Strength five. Toughness four. Uh, two wounds, two attacks, leadership seven, and five up safe. And the hypermorph <laughs> gets uh, an extra attack. Still keeps leadership though. You get five of them in the unit, you can take another five. For every five models in unit, one aberrant hypermorph can take the place of one aberrant. Oh, so you get two of them in the same unit. Nice. Each aberrant is armed with a rending claw and either a heavy power hammer or power pick. Each aberrant hypermorph is armed with a rending claw, hypermorph tail, and either a heavy power hammer or heavy improvised weapon. So these looks like these are heavy hitters. This is the Gene Steeler Cult Terminator ish kind of option. So the heavy improvised weapon is 10 points. Doesn't sound like that good, but it's 10 points to take it. Times two strength, so fighting at strength 10, AP minus one, and two damage. You make two hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon. So standard guy gets four attacks. Pretty good. Hacking down sort of medium heavy infantry. A heavy power hammer. It's your thunder hammer here. It's minus one to hit rolls. Times two strength, AP minus three, three damage. 16 points. For that one. The Hypermorph Tail. Each same bear fights, get an extra attack. Strength user, AP minus one, one damage. The Power Pick, we've seen that. Rending Claw, we've seen that as well. So, yeah, just give a few of them the fun hammers, power hammers. That's what you can expect to do with those. Uh, bestial Vigor. When inflicting damage on a model in this unit, reduce the damage characteristic of the attack by one. Uh, in addition, uh, five pluses to ignore wounds that come through. So yeah, tough enough. Not too bad, but still fast enough. Still movement six for those. Right, so then you've got pure strain gene stealers. I would imagine they're the same as Tyranids gene stealers here. So you can, they're power level four. Yeah, it's the same here, movement eight, weapon skill three plus, there's three attacks are there, five up save, five up invun save. You can advance and charge. Flurry of claws, let's see if you've got more than 10 models, you get extra attacks, it's the same. Yep. Anyone who may take pure strain talons here. Hold on. Uh, which is strength user AP uh, zero, one damage, reroll hit rolls of one for attacks with this weapon. All right, so nothing major. So a glamovus, a clamovus, spelled with a C, clamovus here at power level three. 55 points. Uh, it's armed with an auto pistol. So this is a model where you're looking for the special abilities to help out uh, other units. So uh, movement six, weapon skill, ballistic skill three plus, strength three, toughness three, four wins, three attacks, leadership eight and a five up safe. Uh, Cult ambush and crushable loyalty. Scrambler array. Enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot set up within 12 inches of this model. In addition, at the start of your shooting phase, roll d6 for each enemy unit within six of any clam, clam of us's from your army. On a six, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. That's it. Okay, a proclamator hailer, so the next special rule. Add one to the leadership characteristic of cult units whilst within six of any for any cult clan versus. In addition, add one to advanced charge rolls made for units. Now that's good. Uh, of any for any cult clan versus when the roll is made. That's very helpful. So for those reasons, especially this one here, the proclamator hailer, because there's units you want to get into close combat, I would take one of them. Yeah. At the point where you want to make contact, you know, this area where you've you've lined up your assault units, here is where you want to make uh, impact, make contact, then get one of those nearby. Useful. 
Uh, a Locus is next. At 40 points, even cheaper. Uh, it's got a Hypermorph Tower at uh, Locus Blades. Zero uh, for the Locus Blades. And that's zero for the tower. So very, very cheap. Movement six, power level two, power level three up here. Uh, movement six, weapon skill two plus, ballistic skill three plus, strength four, toughness three, four wounds, four attacks, leadership eight and a five up save. Uh, the tower we've seen, the blades, is strength for the user, which is four, AP minus three, one damage, increases its damage characteristic to two, if the bearer made a charge move, was charged or performed a rogue intervention. Nice. Locus is pretty good. On the charge there. Or if it was charged, or heroic intervention, nice. Usual special rules. Unquestioning bodyguard. Each time a cult character model, other than a locust, loses a wound whilst in three inches of any friendly cult locuses, you can select one of those locuses to intercept the attack instead of using the unquestioning loyalty ability. If you do so, roll d6. On a 2 plus, the character does not lose a wound, but the selected model suffers one mortal wound. Ah, so you're not slain. And you've got four wounds here. You cannot then use the unquestioned loyalty ability to avoid this. On a one, the original model loses the wound as normal. It's very good. Really devoted here with the locus. If you're not slain, that's brilliant. Just take a mortal wound. There's four wounds to absorb there. Uh, the neurotraumal rod. Subtract one for leadership characteristic of units whilst within six inches of any enemy locuses. Sudden strike. On the charge phase, if this model. That's a computer game I used to like playing, actually. Sudden strike. It was really good. Uh, anyway, in the charge phase, if this model is within three inches of any enemy units, after your opponent has completed all of their charge moves, it can perform heroic intervention. This model can move up to six inches when performing heroic interventions, and can choose to move towards the nearest enemy character within six, rather than the nearest enemy model. There's loads of abilities for this 40 point model. The Locus is brilliant. Quick Silver Dodge, 5 plus Invun save, Quick Silver Strike. This model always fights first in the fight phase, even if it didn't charge. If enemies Units that charge or have similar ability, then you alternate choosing units. Locus is brilliant. Really good. See, I'd, I'd have a, a. I'd have a, a, load, a load of them. <laughs> I think they're very good. Really good model, that one. Uh, a Sanctus next. This is this assassin type guy here. Uh, 55 points, again, a lot of cheap options, cheap character options here, which means you can spend out a load of these and still keep your army nice and bulky, which is great. Power level 3, uh, movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2+, plus. strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8 and a 5 up save. It's armed with a, s a silencer sniper rifle. He's guided by a soul sight familiar, uh, which attacks using its familiar claws. So, the rifle then. Just check here, to see if you have to pay for it. Five points, not that expensive. Okay. Oh, interesting. So I wonder what the, the, the model options are, kit-wise, because you can go for, you can replace the science of sniper rifle with a Sanctus Bio Dagger, which is obviously a vastly different pose here. Sanctus Bio Dagger, zero points, an even cheaper option. So do you go sniper or dagger? to be uh, assassin skills here. The silence of sniper rifles range 36, heavy one, strength four, minus one, D3 damage. You can target characters. If a wound roll of six plus this weapon inflicts mortal wound as usual. If a psyker loses any wounds as a result of an attack this weapon, it suffers perils of the warp <laughs> after the attacks have been resolved. Cool. You take a psyker out pretty quick with that. Nice. Okay. Uh, familiar Claws, I've seen that one. Sanctus Bio Dagger, right? If you go for the close combat option. Uh, strength 1, AP minus 2, 2 damage. Each time you fight, you take an additional attack. You have 5 attacks, and it's always wounding on a 2 plus. Unless it's a, a vehicle or Titanic. So, minor characters, you'll take him out with this guy. You know, 2's to hit in close combat, 2's to wound, regardless of toughness. Minus 2, 2 damage. Yeah, minor characters, you know, like platoon commanders and so on. You'll kill them. Uh, usual special rules, cult assassin. This model can never have a wall trait. In addition, a perfect ambush stratagem a command point has a command point cost of zero uh, if it's being used to affect this model. 
right it's, just, it's free to use that stretch which we'll see later uh, plus two to your saving throws if you're in cover instead of one and the familiar uh, units do not receive the benefit of cover for their saving throws for attacks made by this model useful that is useful okay sanctus yeah pretty good so i'd have a variety of characters I reckon just for the collection aspect as well uh, but they're all pretty good right so the kelomorph next power level three uh 60 points so uh, movement six weapon skill three plus ballistic skill two plus strength three toughness three four wounds three attacks leash eight and five up save got a cultist knife uh, liberator auto stubs as well which is range 12 it's a pistol two strength four minus one and two damage okay this is okay but uh, what are the benefits here for this guy so usual special rules, Gunslinger. This model can target enemy characters even if they're not the closest enemy unit. In addition, each time the model hits an enemy unit with a pistol weapon, it can immediately make one additional hit roll against that target using the same weapon. Okay, these bonus hits cannot themselves generate further hits. But yeah, it's a character killer, but it's short range to do it. Heroic Deeds, Heroic Inspiration. If this model kills enemy models with its ranged weapons, then until the end of the phase, reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly cult infantry units whilst they're in six inches of this model. And you've got a five plus in one save. So he's okay. He's alright. So the Sanctus would be better. Yeah. And the Locust. Yes. Okay. Next is a, a Nexos. 50 points for this one. Power level 3. Movement 6. 3 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill. Strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 5 up save. Uh, it's armed with an auto pistol. So. Uh, just an auto pistol here. So, usual special rules. If you're taking for the. His own special rules here. Strategic coordinator. After this model has been set up on the battlefield, you can select one of your ambush markers that is on the battlefield and remove it before setting up again anywhere that's wholly within your own deployment zone, more than 12 inches from any model. So there's a bit of a strategic ma manipulation going on here of your ambush counters. In addition, if your army is battleforged, roll 1d6 each time uh, either player spends a command point to use a stratagem whilst this nexus from your army is on the battlefield. If it was a command point you spent, and there are at least one cult primus and one cult nexus from your from your army on the battlefield, add one to the result. If it was a command point your opponent spent, there is at least one cult clamavus and one cult nexus in your army on the battlefield, uh, add one to the result. In either case, six plus, or will become a five plus if you have those combos, you immediately regain a command point. Yeah, it's useful, and means you need a selection of the, the models here. So a little bit of marketing <laughs> there from Games Workshop. But uh, I'd probably go for all these anyway. I was collecting them, but uh, five plus getting command points, and you get a pretty good. You know, there's restrictions now; it's been updated, uh, but you get a pretty good stream coming through of command points. So I'd imagine with the cheapness of the models, the ability to take very sort of cheap Vanguard, you know, options here, loads of cheap like elites, for example, and so on. You get a cheap battalions. You better get a lot of command points for this list, which is exciting uh, when we take a look at what the options are for uh, the stratagems here. Uh, the Biophagus is next, power level 2. Uh, 35 points and you can take one of the familiars, uh, an Alchemicus, Alchemicus, Alchemicus familiar, 12 points again. Uh, so that's this guy here. The Biophagus surveys the field of clinical detachment as his muscle-bound creations lumber into battle around him. So just to hang around with these aberrants here. Uh, movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 3+, plus strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, slash 8 and a 5 up save. And the familiar 3 up weapon skill, strength 4, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, slash 8 and a 6 up save. Uh, he's armed with uh, an auto pistol and injector goad, maybe accompanied by the familiar. Uh, the injector goad. It's going to be down here. Zero. So, uh, not very expensive. 
The injector code is plus one strength, fighting strength, four AB zero D three damage. Uh, weapon always wins on two plus, unless it's a titanical vehicle. If a character loses any wounds as a result of an attack, this weapon or D six for it. After all the bearer's attacks have been resolved, if the result is higher than the model's wounds characteristic, it's D three mortal wounds. So nasty enough. You probably want to keep him out of trouble though. This guy. Usual special rules, and then uh, genomic enhancement. This model may enhance one friendly cult aberrant unit. Right, yes, it's designed to hang around with them within an inch of it at the end of each of your movement phases. Roll a d6 on a 1. One model in the selected unit is slain. Then roll a d3 and refer to the table below to see what the bonus the survivors gain for the rest of the battle. It will cost your model. Uh, you'll then get uh, on a 1, it's d3 here, on a 1 it's plus 1 strength. On two, it's enhanced resilience, which is uh, to plus one toughness, and a three is plus one attacks. Yeah, it's worth it, is it, doing that? Just to gain that. Uh, it's only on a one, so it's highly unlikely you're going to lose a model. So, and it's only one off, and it's random. So, yeah, it's okay. But quite random there, just to, uh, and the familiar there, the usual rules. Uh, no, 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 it's not usual. Sorry. If the biophagus is accompanied by Alchemist familiar, then once per game, the biophagus uses its uh, genomic enhancement ability. Its familiar can aid it. If it does so, roll two d three when rolling on the geometric enhancement table and choose. Oh, what? Well, choose which result? You can't take both. Okay. So it helps, but twelve points just to do that as well. Okay, probably wouldn't bother with that one. Save the points for this. There's better ways to spend the points there. Okay, so fast attack next. So, yeah, some exciting releases here. Quads, buggies, and bikes here. <laughs> Very cool. So the Achilles, Ridge Runner. Great names Games Workshop have come up with here. Uh, 50 points to start off with, then you add your war gear on top. Power level 4, movement 14, so keep up with the bikers, nice and quick. Weapon skill 6+, plus, ballistic skill 4+, plus. Uh, strength 5, toughness 5, 8 wounds. It's very similar to the orcs here. Uh, 3 attacks, leadership 7 and 4 up save. Uh, you can take one of them, add another one or another two, so you can take units of three. Each one of them is equipped with two heavy stubbers, a heavy mining laser and a flare launcher. So... So we know the mining laser, we've covered that already. No, this is a heavy mining laser. This is the better option. It is actually a really good, a really good weapon. Uh, so it's 25 points. But it's the same cost as a last cannon. It's sort of their equivalent to one. Potentially better. Uh, so it's heavy D3, so you could get three shots from this thing. The downside is hitting on four pluses. Uh, range 36 as well. Uh, leadership 9, AP minus 3, and it's D6 damage a time. So it's nasty enough. You know, if you stuck one of those on the vehicle, you get 75 points. So, reasonable enough. Uh, heavy stubbers, usual rules. Any model can replace its heavy mining laser with either a missile launcher or a heavy mortar. Okay. So usual rules for the missile launcher, that's probably going to be 20 points. Uh, 15, all right, 15 points for the missile launcher, significantly cheaper. You're still getting your D6 damage weapon there, uh, but the heavy mine laser is, is nasty. Okay, um, then the uh, the heavy mortar, sounds good, it's only 8 points. Oh, this could be a very cheap loadout here. Uh, range 48, brilliant range. Oh, this is really good. Uh, yeah, heavy D6, strength 5 minus 1, 1 damage. And it's uh, you can fire at targets, not visible to the bearer. So you've got some good weapons you can load these things out with, but they're sort of built for speed. Yeah, but then when you move, it's even heavy stuff is heavy. We'll see what they're all say here, but uh, you're on minuses to hit rolls, so these are better when they sit still. But then it doesn't really match the style of them. Um. Oh, okay. 
So any model may replace its flare launcher with either a survey auger or a spotter. There's plenty of options here. So a flare launcher then is five points. Model is equipped with a flare launcher. Roll D6 each time it loses a wound. On a six, the wound is not lost. In addition, once per battle, at the start of any movement phases, you can select one friendly cult bike unit within six. That unit moves an additional six inches. If it advances this phase, no dice roll necessary. Cool. Yeah, flare launchers are great. Six is to ignore damage. And uh, you give a bonus to bikers, so you swarm the bikers around these things. I guess it, it means you could make a biker buggy quad themed army and within it there's heavy weaponry you know they can all hang around with each other so you can go for a real themed list here you don't have to have any infantry if you don't want to if you want to make it fully fast and mechanized it'll be an exciting army to see on the battlefield cool uh, so uh, explodes uh, is a mortal wound of units within three inches on a six so, Scout Vehicle. At the start of the first battle round, before the first turn begins, you can move this unit up to 9 inches. It cannot end its move more than within 9 inches of enemy models. If both players have units that can do this, the player is taking the first turn that uh, moves their units first. So, yeah, nice speed with this thing. Now, the Survey Auger is 10 points. Do not re units do not receive the benefit for cover. Do they save a phrase for attacks made by model with a Survey Auger? Yeah, yeah it's alright. I'd still take the flare launcher and then a spotter. If a model has a spotter, increase the range characteristic of its range weapons by six. Uh, but you're so fast you'd be able to get into range with those 14 inch range. And a spotter's gonna cost you five points. Now I would go with the flare launcher, make it a bit more resilient and uh, boost the bikers with that. And I guess if you really need the fire page, you just have to sit still. Otherwise you'd be on fives to hit with your shooting. But they're cheap enough though. What about the mortars? Whether you'd sit mortars, you know, fast vehicle and then mortars sitting in them. Not sure. That'd be a cheap loadout. But I'd, I'd think I'd would be heavy mine, heavy mine laser. Right now, these are units here. It doesn't say you can split them up, so they've got to hang around with each other if you take three of them. So you could say bury one of the models in there with the heavy mining laser and then surround it with two cheaper options like the mortars for example the opponent's got to try and chew through those first before getting to the heavy mining lasers you could, could go for that kind of combat or just a duo a double so one with the mortar one with the mining laser you know the cheaper option there and then uh, protecting the one with the heavy mining laser something like that okay uh atalan jackals next this is the the bikers power level three uh, so, okay, 10 points, and the quads, the wolf quads, are 15 points time, but 10, 10 points for these bikes. God, <laughs> cheap. It's, okay, well, it's your jet bike equivalent here. Uh, movement 14, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4+, plus. strength 3, toughness 4, 2 wounds, nice. Uh, 1 attack, leadership 7 to 5 up save. Now what are these good for? Immediately it's speed for getting around the table. Uh, the leader is still two wounds, an extra attack, leadership eight, and the wolf quad is the same, but with four wounds, um, and still just one attack. The unit contains one leader, Atalan leader, and one and three jackals. You include additional four Atalan jackals, or eight additional Atalan jackals. For every four, remember you can go for a maximum unit of 12, uh, for every four of them, and or Atalan leaders in the unit, you can include one Atalan Wolf Quad. Each order is armed with an auto pistol and blasting charges. Each Atalan Wolf Quad is equipped with a heavy stubber. So the armament's not that amazing, really. No. Just pistols and blasting charges. Okay, and not that great in close combat. So what sort of tactical use for these? I'm sure there'll be some other enhancements for them, but um, not that deadly. But cheap though, very, very cheap. So no complaints, you can take hordes of these. But what to do with them? What, what are they good to take on? I mean, close combat's not that great, so maybe some close range shooting. Ah, right, okay, there's some, just seeing some loadouts here you can go for. So, uh, the Atalan leader and 
and each jackal must take two weapons from the Atalan weapons list. The same model cannot take the same weapon twice. Only one in every four of these models can take a grenade launcher, and only, one, only the Atalan leader can take an auto gun, auto pistol, or power axe. Right. So, the Atalan leader and each jackal must take two weapons from the weapon list. Okay. So, what are those options here? Good fun, great fun configurations here. Those loads, right. So you've got to take at least two of these. Auto gun, auto pistol, bolt pistol, cultist knife, demolition charge. Oh, wow. <laughs> Try to give them demolition charges. <laughs> Superb. Grenade launcher. Improvised weapon. Uh, which is just nothing. Just nothing there at all. Power axe. That can go to the leader. Power hammer. Power pick. And shotgun. Power hammers. So you really can equip these well. I've uh, not many attacks though, and any forced hit. So I reckon the good option for those is going to be demolition charges and also grenade launchers. Give them a load of those for a load of shots. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even shotguns as well, which is all of these models are armed with here, and it. Uh, any Atalan Wolf Guard, Wolf Quad, Wolf Guard, any Atalan Wolf Quad can take one of the following uh, auto pistol, shotgun, improvised weapon, or power pick. Any Wolf Quad may replace its heavy stubber with a mining laser or Atalan incinerator. So, a mining laser, we've seen the rules for that, that's the it's a heavy one shot, strength 9 minus 3, d6 damage, but you're on the move, you can be hitting on 5 pluses, so I don't think that really suits them, so I probably wouldn't take that. Um, but the Atalan Incinerator is range 12, again get, trying to get close, heavy d6, strength 5 minus 1, 1 damage, and it's auto hits on the target, nice, so that covers you for your movement, brilliant, nice, heavy, no, but then it's auto hit, so that's fine, and a bit of uh, protection as well, Overwatch, what's the cost of that, 14 points a time, so it's expensive enough, so maybe take a couple of those in the unit there. So you know, use those for speedy attacks and ambush, and primarily I would be using the incinerators, I reckon, and the demolition charges. Is what I'd be going for, I reckon. Okay, so, uh, usual special rules, cult ambush and unquestioning loyalty. Skilled outriders, subtract one from the hit rolls for attacks that target this unit in the shooting phase. Right, so they're able to dodge with their bikes. So quite hard to shoot them. Great. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant unit. And, and the, the models are incredible. They really are nice. Okay, so Armoured Sentinels, Scout Sentinels, that's the usual Astra Militarum rules. So it's great to have those. Liam Russ for your heavy support. Uh, so, uh, just the usual rules for that for the Astra Militarum as well. So we're into heavy support now. Uh, a Brood Brothers Heavy Weapon Squad, right, so Astra Militarum. So, Goliath Rock Grinder. This is the unique vehicle for the Genius Dealer Colts. It's power level 6. And it's 78 points, and then your war gear on top of that. Add uh, weapon skill 4 plus, strength 6, toughness 7, 10 wounds, uh, leadership 7 and 4 up save. So, uh, your, your damage chart here is uh, 10 inches, drops to 6, drops to 4. Ballistic skill from 4 down to 4 plus to 5 plus to 6 plus, and then attacks 6, start off with 6 attacks, loads of attacks, d6 damage, and, uh, sorry, then d6 attacks, then d3. So it's really geared for getting into close combat here, I, I, I think that's the route I would go down with these. Um, it's heavy stubber is the armament, heavy mining laser, that's a really good weapon, and the drill dozer blade. So, yeah, there's plenty of options here. So this model may take a cache of demolition charges. It doesn't replace anything. I'd definitely add this in. Uh, so it's going to be here. It's 10 points at range 6. Assault D6. Strength 8, minus 3, D3 damage. 
This weapon can be fired if a model excluding models of ballistic skill of characteristic of dash is embarked upon the vehicle. Equipped with it. Okay, so yeah, you've got to have someone inside to fire it. It's not one use only, so that's brilliant. So again, getting in closer, melee, getting in close again with this grenade weapon. Uh, this the heavy mine laser we've already covered. And heavy stubber. The drill dozer blade uh, is zero. So it comes with the cost of the vehicle. So the costs are low here at the moment. Uh, but then I suppose by the time you had the mining laser on top, you're pushing towards 100 points. Um, plus three strength, fighting at strength nine, minus two, D3 damage. The bearer can make D3 additional attacks on the turn in which it made a charge with. Again, encouraging to get stuck in with this thing. So six attacks plus D3, that's loads. You're going to chew through stuff fast with that. Just four pluses to hit though, but it's uh, nasty enough the ability to charge that in. Cool. A uh, model may replace its heavy mining laser with a clearance incinerator or heavy seismic cannon. I like the, I like the sound of this clearance incinerator here. Uh, range 12, heavy 2d6, fantastic. Strength 5, minus 1, 1 damage. Auto hits on the target. Heavy 2d6, and it's range 12. Not range 8, range 12. The clearance incinerator will cost 30 points. Whoa, <laughs> you, do pay, you do pay for it. If you're going to go for assault, a lot of, you know, to plunge that into the heart of a, an enemy force here, heavy, uh, the clearance incinerator, the cash of demolition charges, charging in, loads of ability here. And, you know, it negates your 4 plus to hit, your auto hits of your shooting. Uh, the heavy seismic cannon, covered that already. Uh, no, this is the heavy version here. This is going to be costly. 20 points, not so bad. Uh, it's heavy though, so you've got to remain sort of stationary uh, to get the best ballistic skill. You choose one of the profiles. Any sixes to wound is AP minus 4. Range 24, heavy 6, strength 4, minus 1, 2 damage. And short wave range 12, heavy 3, strength 8, minus 2, 3 damage. Okay, cool ambush. Rugged construction. Sixes uh, wounds aren't lost. You can uh, explode, which is range 6, D3 mortal wounds. If you explode on the 6. Uh, the Rock Grinder can transfer up to six infantry, and each Patriarch takes the place of five other models. <laughs> you can put a Patriarch in the back. So a Goliath truck, so that's more of your, can transport some, it's like an Eldar Falcon, can transport some but heavier weapons, that's that option. And now for your proper transport here, the Goliath truck. I'd love to see, what a game that would be. Uh, GNC the Colts with, with uh, a mechanised version, you know, so bikers, quads and the vehicles versus uh, orcs, speed freaks and all mechanised, you know, bikers and buggies and stuff. Fighting across this kind of landscape. <laughs> oh, what a game. What a unique game that would be. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Goliath truck. It's here, yeah. 50 points. So starts off very, very cheap. Weapon skill of 6 plus, this is more just for transportation here. Strength 6, toughness 6, 10 wounds though. Uh, leadership 7 and 4 up save. Just gets 3 attacks, D3 then 1. Ballistic skill goes from 4 plus, 5 plus, 6 plus. Movement of 12, 8 and 4. So this is really just for transporting. Wouldn't expect much else from this. It can take the cash of demolition charges as an option. And it's 6 is to ignore wounds with rugged construction. You are open top tier. Oh, so the rock grinder is not open top. This is the one where you want stuff to fire out of the top of it uh, with your open top options. Colt Chimera, Astromilitarum, and then the Tectonic Frag Drill here that you can take as a piece of uh, terrain. 75 points, and this is what you get. Fantastic looking piece of terrain. Very thematic here to match the theme. Uh, of this sort of the mining kind of theme here for uh, the Genius Steeler Colts, but see what you can do here with this. So, sector mechanical structure after set up, a tectonic frag draw is treated as a sector mechanical strain feature. It cannot move for any reason, it's not treated as a friendly or enemy model, and it cannot be targeted or affected by any attacks or abilities. Well, that's just. <laughs> you can't shoot it, I suppose it's terrain, but. Okay. Only infantry beast swarms and units that can fly can be set up on or in their move on the upper floors of a sector mechanical structure. Any that can do so on the ground.
can, uh, any unit can do so on the ground floor unless they can fly. Infantry beasts and swarms must scale or must scale ladders, girders, or walls to ascend or descend between the different levels of a sector mechanical structure. Infantry are also assumed to be able to traverse around girders, buttresses, and hanging chains, and so move through them without imp impediment. Infantry units that are entirely on a sector mechanical structure receive the benefit of cover. So do you get cover? Uh, other units that are entirely within a sector mechanical structure only receive the benefit that's 50% obscured. Okay. Underground ingress. Once per turn in the movement phase, one infantry or bike unit with the cult ambush ability can move off the battlefield if all of its models are on a ground level and can move an inch of this model. The unit cannot do so in the same phase it arises if it arrives as reinforcements. If unit does this, remove the select unit from the battlefield. At the end of your next movement phase, you set the unit up anywhere on the battlefield more than 9 inches from the enemy models. If the battle ends before the unit is set up, it is destroyed. So you disappear, you cr cluster around here, you disappear, and then it represents the, there's this tunnel, and then you can send a unit off to appear somewhere else. That's cool. Decent rules. Activate the drill. If a model from your army is on the tectonic frag drill at the end of your movement phase, and there are no enemy models on it, you can activate the drill. Oh, I hate to think what's going to happen here. Uh, if you do so, roll d6 for every unit on the ground level that is within 3 inches of the tip of the model's large drill. On a 6, the unit immediately suffers d6 mortal wounds. Then roll a d6, adding 1 to the result for each other time the drill on this model has been activated during the battle. If the total is less than 6, seismic tremors result uh, below takes effect. On a 6 plus, the seismic tremors and seismic quake results below take effect. The seismic quake result can only take effect once per battle, regardless of how many tectonic frag drills are on the battlefield. Seismic tremors. To the start of the next movement phase, subtract 2 from charge rolls made of units also in 12 inches of this model. This does not apply to units that can fly in the effects of multiple seismic tremors, not cumulative. Right, so you're trying to slow people down as they're trying to close in for the kill uh, on this terrain and the units that are uh, near it. Seismic quake. Draw a straight imaginary line. One millimetre in thickness from any point on the battlefield edge to any other battlefield edge uh, in such a way that it crosses this model. Roll d6 for every any, every unit this line crosses that is on ground level. Uh, do not roll for units that can fly. On a 4 plus, it's d3 mortal wounds. If its move characteristic is halved until the end of its next movement phase. Okay, so. Seems alright, some very uh, quite extreme rules for that thing. But uh, not bad. It's all right. I think it's better than the Imperial Knights terrain version. Okay, so we covered all these, I think, and all the other war gear. And right here, that's the usual. Yeah, what a great battle that would be. Look at that. Gene Steel Colts against Ultramarines. Great fight, that one. Okay, so, uh, special rules then. So, Insurrectionists, that's the usual objective secured for troops. Cult Creeds. So you choose your cult creed, which one you're going to go for from there. Uh, and then brood brothers. So uh, these units can be included in the genius to the cult's attachment without preventing other units in that detachment from getting a cult creed. Okay, so there's that to, to read through there as well. Talk about Astro Latarum units here. So we'll go through these creeds. Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor, subterranean ambushes. To the end of the first battle round, add one to advance and charge rolls made for the units of this cult creed. Okay, starting from the second battle round, if a unit of this cult creed is set up on the battlefield, to the end of that turn, add one to advance and charge rolls made for that unit. That's useful. That is that is very useful trying to, if you're going to play aggressive and so on. Yeah, and combine that with that other power earlier on that gave you plus one. Looking at uh, much more reliable charges here. And that all adds to this whole ambush. The last thing you want is a lot of ambush units turning up and then they, they're all failing their charges because nine inches is quite difficult. So there's some bonuses here. Uh, the Pauper Prince is devoted zealots. Reroll hit rolls of. Uh, you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by a unit of this cult creed on turning which it made a charge move, was charged or performed heroic intervention. That's very powerful. Reroll hit rolls with melee weapons. Fantastic. Uh, the Hive Cult Disciplined Militants. There's very good ones here so far. If unit of this cult creed fails a morale test, halve the number of models that flee. In addition, units of this cult creed can still shoot in a turn in which they fell back. 
If they do so, you must subtract one from hit rolls. Nice. So that's not bad, that one. If it was just the, the morale bonus, it would be quite tame, but also the ability to pull back and still shoot is really good. You know, if you've got flame weapons, for example, it's not going to impact you. If, you know, the minus one's not going to apply there. Uh, the bladed cog. Difficult choice here, so far. Uh, cyber cyborgized hybrids. All models of this cult creed have 6 plus invun save. Models of this cult creed that already have an invun save improve their invun save by 1 to a 3 plus maximum. Nice. Uh, in addition, infantry models of this cult creed do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for moving and shooting heavy weapons. Wow, brilliant. God. All models of this creed. So that's, that's the one to take for your mechanised stuff. No minuses for your shooting, and all of a sudden your vehicle's getting a six swap in fun zone. Brilliant. This is, these are powerful uh, creeds here. The Rusted Claw, Nomadic Survivalists. When making saving throws, excluding in fun saving throws from model this cult creed, add one to the result with the weapon being used to make the attack as an armor penetration characteristic of zero or minus one. Nice. In addition, biker models of this creed do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for moving and firing and uh, shooting heavy weapons or for advancing and shooting assault weapons. So again, that's pretty good. Then Twisted Helix, uh, Experimental Subjects, add one to the strength characteristic of models of this cult creed. In addition, add two to advanced rolls to this unit with this cult creed. That one's okay. None of, the, none of those are tame. I think they're all pretty good, actually. They're quite strong, those. Yeah, difficult choices, but it all matches the theme that you're going for. So the, the way you want to play them you can choose your appropriate creed, and there's some great benefits there for them. Okay, this is the tasty nuggets potentially here. I wonder if there's, uh, we'll see if we'll see if there's any ones that are <laughs> really, really good ones. We'll see. So, clandestine goals. This is one command point. Use this stratagem before the battle if your army is led by Gene Steeler Colt's warlord and you're playing a mission that uses tactical objectives. The duration of the battle, keep your tactical objectives secret from your opponent, only revealing them when they're achieved. Brilliant. We're off the, the bat here with a really good one. You keep all your objectives secret. That's very useful. Tactically, it's brilliant. Only one command point. Okay, superb. Uh, lurk in the shadows. Use this strategy at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. Select a Gene Steeler Colt's infantry unit from your army. It is entirely within any terrain feature. To the end of the phase, any models can only shoot that unit if it is the closest unit that is visible to them. Start of your opponent's shooting phase, right? So you don't wait until you're declared as a target, you've got to anticipate it, but it's a brilliant way to protect a unit. A brilliant way to protect a unit. Lurk in the shadows, very, very useful. Uh, one command point, they came from below. Use the stratagem before you reveal an ambush marker. Select up to three units, excluding vehicles from your army that, that set up an ambush. For each unit that you select, remove one ambush marker from the battlefield. The selected units no longer set up, are no longer set up in ambush, are instead set up underground, as described in the cult ambush ability. It's great te tactical flexibility of that as well. Uh, uh, brood Coven, one command point, use the stratagem before the battle. If your warlord is a patriarch, uh, select one magus and up to one primus from your army. Generate a warlord trait for each selected model. Great. Note these models are only regarded as your warlord for the purposes of the war warlord traits. That's fine. Uh, all these models must have a different warlord trait. This stratagem can be used once per battle. Any one command point. Again, all of a sudden gain access to three warlord traits. Superb. These are excellent stratagems here. Devoted crew. Uh, that's just your choose your top damage bracket for vehicles other factions have a similar one it's one command point um, monstrous vigor two command points use a stratagem at the start of your turn select an aberrant unit from your army to the start of your next turn add one to its uh, bestial vigor rolls made for that unit that's okay uh, meticulous uprising one command point use a stratagem before you reveal an ambush marker move up to three of your ambush markers up to 12 inches each <laughs> God. these markers cannot be moved within nine inches of enemy models outside your deployment zone. You've got to know your stratagems here because there's loads of tactical ones. You really play a, a clever game with your opponent. Really sort of, you know, deceptions and withdrawals and turning up all over the place. Real fluid movement here with these. This is very good. Hyper -met metabolism, one command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your movement phase. Select Gene Steeler Colt's character from your army. 
It regains D3 lost wounds, right? Very useful. Uh, rigged to blow. It's auto explodes, same as the Admet cab for their vehicles. So vehicle destroyed, it's auto detonation. Brilliant. Uh, the first curse, one command point here for this one. Use this strategy before the battle. Select a pure strange genius to the unit from your army. And roll D6 to see which effect applies to the unit for the duration of the battle. One or two, uh, each wound roll of six plus for an attack made in the fight phase. Models in this unit inflicts an additional, one additional damage. Three to four uh, is add one to advance and charge rolls. Brilliant. So there's multiple options here to try and improve your charge range. And on a five plus, oh, sorry, five to six, the unit loses its swift and deadly ability, but its save is changed to a four plus. You can only use a stratagem once per battle. Okay, so it's an option to improve a unit of gene stealers. Cult reinforcements. Use this stratagem at the start of your movement phase. Select a gene stealer cult unit from your army as the troops battlefield roll. You can return up to D6 slay models into that unit. Uh, with each setup within coherency more than an inch away from enemy models. Cool. Brilliant. Only one command point. Superb. Uh, detonate concealed explosives. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Two command points. Use a stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. If any genes see the Colts models from your army are on the battlefield. Select an enemy unit on the battlefield on a D6. Subtract one from the result if the unit is a character and have one if it contains ten or more models. On a four plus uh, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. On a 7 plus, it's D6 mortal wounds. So, yeah, it's okay. It's alright. Especially if you're trying to finish off like a, a lone model. It's holding an objective somewhere or something. So definitely a, a use for that. Uh, scanner decoys. One command point. Use a stratagem in setting up a unit from your army that has the cult ambush ability. Uh, in ambush, place four ambush markers for that unit instead of one. If you have used this stratagem, then you, then when you reveal ambush markers, once there are no units from your army remaining in ambush, remove all of your remaining ambush markers uh, from the battlefield. You can only use this stratagem once per battle. So again, you can deceive the opponent with loads of markers there. There's actually no units there. Really good. Interesting the way they theme these towards the more the tactical. There's all sorts here, but there's loads of tactical enhancements. And it's to match the fluff and the theme of the way these Genius Stealer Colts are meant to play. A perfect ambush. Add three command points. More expensive, this one here. Use a stratagem in the movement phase. Immediately after you've set up an infantry or bike unit from your army, as the Colt ambush ability on the battlefield. This unit can even move D6, even if it has arrived as reinforcements. Wow. Or it can shoot with all of its ranged weapons as if it were the shooting phase. Using this stratagem in your own turn does not prevent that unit from shooting. Uh, in your shooting phase or making a charge move in the charge phase of this turn. Wow. Powerful. So immediately I'm thinking bigger units to take advantage of these stratagems here. Telepathic summons. Two command points. Use this stratagem at the start of your psychic phase. Select a cult psycho model from your army. That model cannot attempt to manifest any psychic powers this phase. Instead roll 3d6. You can add one new Infantry or bike unit to your army if it has the cult ambush ability and its power rating is equal to or less than this roll, otherwise, no unit is added. The unit is immediately set up on the battlefield anywhere that is more than nine inches from enemy models. So, this has nothing to do with reinforcement and reinforcement points. I don't think so, but it's the ability to bring a unit to the table here. Wow. Uh, return to the shadows, one command point. Use this stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select an infantry, one infantry or bike unit from your army that has the cult ambush ability and is more than three inches away from enemy models. You cannot select a unit that arrived as reinforcements this turn. Remove that unit from the battlefield. At the end of your next movement phase, the unit can be set up on the battlefield again anywhere that is more than nine inches from enemy models. If the battle ends before the unit is set up, it's destroyed. But again, the ability to pull out a unit and again uh, bring them in somewhere else. One command point for that. So. And it's not just the ability to move where you need to go, but it's the ability also to, to pull away from where there's danger as well. So there's that kind of trying to get to grips with this army here and pulling out these stratagems, trying to make making them harder to try and get a hold of uh, for an enemy army to to deal with. I wonder how powerful these are going to be. 
they must do well. I mean, they, they've, it's all looks good here. Lying in wait. It's going to be a massive improvement on the index for sure. Lying in wait. Two command points. Use the strategy when you set up a unit from your army that has the cult ambush ability as reinforcements. When setting up that unit, you can set it up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than three inches from enemy models. The unit cannot make a charge move this turn, but you can offload a whole lot of stuff. Pistols and grenades and flamers and things. Kyo. So, I mean, that, that stratagem lets you uh, configure a unit for that card. So, uh, the ability to you know, equip it with a load of stuff that's close range and then play that card. Terrifying, some of these. You really. They're creating it so that nowhere's safe. You know, you, the usual deep strike is, you know, nine inches. You know that they're all going to land of nine, over nine inches away. And you're thinking, you know, only half of them or one third of them are going to make it into close combat. But with this, it's just, they can catch you out anywhere. Hidden explosions and tunnels and lurking in shadows. and <laughs> There's loads of stuff. I guess it's a powerful faction here. Right, and this is a good one. This is, <laughs> this is a good one here. Extra explosives. So, uh, use the strategy before a genius of the culture unit for your army is selected to shoot or fire overwatch. Up to 10 models from this unit that are armed with grenades can throw a grenade this phase instead of only one model being able to do so. But no more than five of these models can throw demolition charges. So I have put a limit there, but still, it's horrific. Maybe you could link that. Yeah, to shoot or fire overwatch. You could link that extra explosives in with your lying in wait. Arrive really close to the opponent and chuck all the grenades. <laughs> uh, grand size gifts, that's your extra relics. We'll cover that a bit later on. Uh, a plan, generations in the making, three command points. Use this stratagem just after your opponent has spent command points to use the stratagem before the effects of that stratagem are resolved. Roll d6. On a one, your opponent's stratagem is resolved as normal. On a two to five, your opponent's command points are refunded. But the stratagem they were using is not resolved and cannot be attempted again this phase. You can now start disrupting your opponent's stratagems as well. On a six, the stratagem they're attempting to use is not resolved, cannot be attempted again this phase, and the command points spent are lost. This stratagem cannot be used if there are no cult of the four armed emperor units on the battlefield rights as specified to them. Uh, and cannot be used to affect stratagems used before the battle or during deployment. Uh, chilling efficiency, this is for hive, a hive cult stratagem. Uh, after a unit from your army uh, has attacked an enemy unit in the shooting phase and the attack resulted in the enemy unit losing one or more, more one or more wounds. Have one to the hit rolls for attacks made by other friendly hive cult units that target the same enemy unit as a phase. Okay. Overthrow the oppressors, which is bladed cog stratagem. Use a strategy before a bladed cog unit, excluding gene silly units from your army is selected to fight in the fight phase. To the end of the fight phase, each time you roll an unmodified roll of a six for an attack made by a model in this unit, you immediately make an extra additional attack against the same target with the same weapon. These bonus attacks cannot themselves generate extra attacks. These extra attacks are instead generated on unmodified rolls of fives and sixes when targeting Imperium units. <laughs> and unmodified rolls of four plus when targeting Admech units. Okay, <laughs> cool. So if you're planning an uprising against Admech or Ashtimilitarum, then go for Blady Cog. <laughs> one command point as well. Two command points here for this one. One command point for drive-by demolitions. This is Rusted Claw Bikers. Uh, unit, three army shoots in the shooting phase until the end of the phase, add one to the hit rolls and wound rolls made for attacks with the as grenade weapons. After this unit has resolved all of its shooting attacks this phase, it can immediately make a move as if it were your movement phase, but cannot charge this turn. Wow, so you drive in, chuck the grenades, really accurate, drive away. Terrifying, one command point for that. Fantastic. Uh, one command point for Vengeance of the Martyred. Uh, this is for Pauper Princes. Uh, use the stratagem an enemy unit that destroys a Pauper Prince's character model from your army. For the remainder of the battle, add one to hit rolls. Attacks made by friendly Pauper Prince's models when they target the enemy unit that destroyed uh, that character. Okay, one of your own. Yeah, one of you lose. You lose a character. Whoever killed him, your units then get plus one to hit rolls. Okay. Uh, monstrous bio horrors. This is for twisted helix. It's three command points. Use your strategy at the end of the fight phase. Select a twisted helix aberrant from the, from your army. You can immediately fight again. In addition, 
to the end of the turn, subtract one of the leadership characteristic of enemy units while seven six. So yeah, uh, stratagems, uh, really, really good. On the same kind of level as the orc stratagems, I would say. Really, really good. Uh, Brood mind, is it worth taking these psychic powers? For the battle, generate the psychic powers of psychers that use powers of the brood mind discipline. Uh, you can either roll dice or choose your power. So, mass hypnosis number one. As a warp charge value of 7, if manifested, it selects an enemy unit of an 18 and visible to the Psyker. To the start of your next Psychic phase, the target cannot fire Overwatch. Wow. Fights last in the fight phase, even if it charged, and must subtract one from its hit rolls. <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh man, that's crazy. Where you go? I'd, I'd, I'd go for it then, just to take that one. <laughs> it's brilliant. Again, sort of disrupting the opponent's ability to resist the uprising here. Mind control. Uh, minor controls warp charge value of 7. If manifest is selects an enemy model within 12 inches of the psyker, roll 3d6. If the result is less than the model's leadership characteristic, nothing happens. But if equals or exceeds, which is half a chance, the model can immediately shoot another enemy unit of your choice, make a single close combat attack against it, as if it were part of your army. Models cannot attack themselves, but they can attack other members of their unit. So... So you're trying to take over a model of some kind. It'd be good fun. Yeah, not too bad, that one. That's uh, Psionic Blast. Warp charge value of 5. If manifested, select an unit of an 18, invisible. Roll 2d6. If the result is less than the highest leadership characteristic in the unit, it suffers a mortal wound. Otherwise, it's d3 mortal wounds. Right, so it's like a, a stackable with smite there with that one. Uh, mental onslaught is next. As warp charge value of six. Uh, if manifested, selects an enemy model within 18 and visible to the psyker. Each player then rolls a d6 and adds their model's leadership characteristic to their result. If your score is higher, the enemy model's unit suffers a mortal wound. If the selected model is still alive when you repeat this process, then you repeat this process uh, until each player rolling a d6 and adding their respective leadership until either the selector model is destroyed or you fail to inflict a mortal wind by having a score higher than your opponents. Okay, so there's, there's other factions with a similar ability to that. It's like a roll off here, just uh, picking up mortal wind. Yeah, I, there's some good ones here. Psychic Stimulus. So warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select a gene, see the cult unit of an 18 of the Psyker. To the start of your next Psychic phase, that unit can ch charge even if it advanced. Though not if it fell back. And they can always fight first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. If your opponent has units that have charged, or have a similar ability, then you'll alternate. Which one? So that's a good one. Yeah, useful. Some really useful stuff here. Uh, might from beyond. As uh, warp charge value of 7. If manifested sector genes to the cult's infantry or bike unit of 18, add one to the strength and attacks characteristic of all models in the unit to your next. Psychic phase. Excellent. Great. So yeah, these are all they're all okay. A number of those are fantastic. So the brood mind discipline is, is well worth it, I think, for sure. So you've got warlord traits here, and it's the, the usual setup now. You've got your standard six for this faction, uh, and then you have ones that are specialized to your creed. Uh yes, so uh, number one, focus of adoration. Friendly cult infantry and bike units can perform heroic intervention whilst they are within six inches of your warlord, even if they're not characters. Okay, so it's useful. It's a useful one. Shadow Stalker. Subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target your warlord. If you want to try and keep them alive uh, a bit better, so that one's alright. Which is okay. There's, I wouldn't say there's any particularly exceptionally powerful like characters here. It's sort of a mixture of all these multiple small ones. Uh, Biomorph Adaption, add one to your warlord's attacks and strength. It's okay. Born Survivor, reduce any damage inflicted on your warlord by one to a minimum of one. For example, if your warlord fails a saving throw against attack that inflicts three damage, it will be two wounds instead of three. Add three to your warlord's aura abilities, alien majesty, and then perpetual speed, or sorry, preternatural speed. Your warlord always fights first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. If the enemy units a similar ability, and so on, 
Uh, you cannot select this warlord trait for a locus. If randomly selected for a locus, uh, treat this result as a biomorph adaption instead. Okay. So now your specialist ones here. They all seem alright. Yeah. They're okay. Not bad. Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor. Ins inscrutable Cunning. Once per battle, if the Warlord is on the battlefield, reroll one hit roll, wind roll, or saving throw it made for friendly Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor units. In addition, if your army is battleforged, roll D3 before the battle begins. You gain a number of additional command points equal to the result. Fantastic. Good. Uh, Hive Cult. Hive Lord. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made with ranged weapons by models with in friendly hive cult units within six inches of your warlord. Useful, yeah. If you've got guns, you want to fire more accurately. Bladed cog, uh, single-minded obsession. After deployment, before the first battle round begins, select one unit from your opponent's army. You can reroll wound rolls for attacks made by a bladed cog units whilst within six inches of your warlord and targeting the selected unit. Yeah, useful enough. Uh, rusted claw, entropic. Touch. Each time you roll an unmodified wound roll of six in the fight phase for a model from a friendly rusty cog unit, whilst within six inches of your warlord, the arm penetration characteristic of the attack is improved by one. So, like AP minus one becomes AP minus two. Again, it's okay. Not bad. Uh, and then the Pauper Prince's beloved Grand Shire. Add two to the unquestioning loyalty rolls made when you foul saving throws for your warlord, when your warlord suffers a mortal wound. That's useful. Four pluses to block becomes twos. That's pretty good. Uh, Twisted Helix by Alchemist. Increase the damage characteristic of weapons. Other than sacred relics of the cult or weapons modified by sacred relics of the cult used by your, your warlord by one. Okay. Relics. Alright, last bit here. So we'll see what kind of relics you can get here. Which is bound to be a couple of good ones. Uh, so, Icon of the Cult Ascendant, uh, the Acolyte Icon Ward only. Add one to the strength characteristic of friendly cult infantry bike units whilst within six inches of the bearer. It's okay. Uh, sword of the Void's Eye. Model with a bone sword, it replaces it, and you get plus two strength, AP minus three, and D3 damage. A career or hit and wound rolls this weapon. Nice. Really good. Amulet of the Void Worm. Add one to the saving throws made for the bearer against ranged weapons. In addition, any units cannot fire overwatch at the bearer. No Overwatch, wow. That is very useful. And that's uh, it's a universal, it's open to any of the um, creeds here. Scourge of Distant Stars, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by the bearer's melee weapons. In addition, each time an enemy model targets the bearer with a melee weapon and your opponent rolls no modified hit roll of one, the attacker's unit suffers a mortal wound <laughs> after all of its attacks have been resolved. Useful. Oppressor's Bane, model with an auto pistol, or Liberator Auto Stub only. Oppressor's Bane replaces that. Uh, you get range 12, pistol 3, strength 4, minus 2, 2 damage. You can target characters, even if you're not the chosen enemy unit. You can reroll wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon, and targeting enemy characters. That's a good one. Nice. Uh, Dagger of Swift Sacrifice. All with a Cultist Knife or Sanctus Bio Dagger only. You replace that. Uh, you get AP minus 2 and 2 damage. Each time you fight, you get an extra attack. Weapon always wounds on a 2 plus, unless it's a vehicle or titanic unit. If your character loses any wounds as a result of an attack with this weapon, but it's not slain, it suffers D3 mortal wounds after the bearer has made all of its attacks. So, a more efficient way of hunting characters. Uh, the Crouchling, this is Primarch or Primarch Patriarch or Magus, with familiar only. The Crouchling replaces. One of the model's familiars. The Crouchling follows all the normal rules for familiar with the following additions. Whilst the Crouchling is alive, the Patriarch or Magus, it, company, it accompanies knows one additional psychic power from the Broodmind Discipline and adds one to any psychic tests it takes when attempting to manifest a psychic power from the Broodmind Discipline. Uh, Gift from Beyond. Model with Jackal Sniper Rifle or Silencer Sniper Rifle. Okay, here we go, this could be good. Add two to wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon's Jackal Sniper Rifle or Silencer Sniper Rifles unless it's targeting a vehicle or Titanic unit. Yeah, that's really useful. Plus two to wound rolls. Wow. Yeah, it's wounded on a five, becomes a three plus. Wounding on a four, becomes a two plus. Yeah, really good, that. Sword of the Four-Armed Emperor. This is four. 
cult of the four-armed emperor um, replaces the bone sword locust blades strength for the user AP minus three one damage each time you fight you get an additional four attacks this weapon uh, the Vop Cores Talisman, this is for Hive Cults here, model you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made with the bearer's melee weapons when targeting enemy characters. In addition, each time you roll a wound of a 6+, plus, uh, inflicts a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage, unless it's targeting vehicle or Titanic. Uh, Mark of the Clawed Omnisire, Bladed Cog model, bearer has a 4 plus invon save, in addition each time the model finishes a charge move, select one enemy unit within an inch, roll d6, on 2 plus, it's a mortal wound. And then that meta, meta, metalophagic stave, rusty claw magus, it replaces the bearer's force stave, it's plus 2 strength, AP minus 5, and d3 damage. Each time roll a wound of a 4 plus for an attack made with this weapon, targets a vehicle, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any damage and uh, if you're a 6 plus to wound it's d3 mortal wounds and then the reliquary of saint tendark <laughs> pauper prince's model uh, units for any units automatically pass morale test whilst within six inches of the bearer yeah, that's useful in addition or d6 each time a friendly pauper prince's Infantry or bike model is destroyed whilst it's within six inches of the bearer. Before removing the model from the battlefield on a four plus, the model can either shoot, oh wow, with one of its shooting weapons, uh, or make a single close combat attack. Wow, this is like a Space Marine style banner here with the reliquary of the Saint Tendark. The last one, the, ex the elixir of the prime specimen. Twisted helix model only increase the attacks, toughness, and wounds characteristic of the bearer by one. That's it, that's the uh, relics there, that's the points cost, and they give you the six extra tactical objective cards that you'll get in with the deck here for Gene Steeler Colts. So that's the review, and they look really good. Uh, they look a strong army here, for sure. Um, you know, if, if they were okay during the index, I, I think the, the codex now is a massive enhancement. Uh, you've got the, the creeds there, um, obviously the points, there may well be some points revisions there, I'd imagine they've got cheaper, uh, brand new models being added in, you can really go for some very strong themes here even within this codex. Um, and it looks like a very strong set of stratagems as well, some really really strong ones uh, it seems uh, to be available here for the Genius Leader Cult side. Maybe leave in the comment section if you've played these with the index. How well were you getting on uh, you know, against other factions? Was this one of the middle level armies or one of the lower level armies? And then now make your prediction with the in, in the light of this codex here. How well do you think Gene Steeler Colts are going to do now that they have their own codex and all of the extra bonuses uh, that come with it? But uh, that's the review. Thanks to Games Workshop for sending me a copy ahead of time. As I mentioned, I usually get my Games Workshop stuff at GameFigures.com. Uh, you can check them out for discount 40k and a whole load of other gaming systems available from them as well. Uh, for those of you asking about battle reports, uh, these have never appeared on the channel before, but that may well change in the future. Thanks for watching the review. Keep a lookout for more reviews, all the other codex reviews available on the channel here, and all the other content uh, on Striker Scorpion 82, and also the Plus channel as well. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.